Welcome to episode 326 of the Overlook Hour. I'm your host, Clark Little. Along with me, as always, is the man sitting across the table from me. Again, as per custom of the show, we must talk about what he is wearing. Okay. Well, he's naked. It's Russell John the Fisherman. I'm not naked. Yeah, emotionally. From the waist up. I got my Cobra shirt on today. What's going on waist down? No, don't, we don't need Can to Can I talk that. about me, what I'm doing waist no, no, down no, these no, days? No, 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 Randy. Do, do not steal it from me. Adult diapers? <laughs> Dude, do you know how expensive diapers are? Look. No. Like, I'm pro-abortion now. They cost, they cost <laughs> a lot of money. Also, congratulations on getting the uh, number correct. I really thought you were going to just say 327. It's in 326 of these episodes, have I not elicited a sense of trust from you <laughs> i mean it comes and goes you know what i mean but three actually here we go my shirt i'm wearing my cobra shirt mm-hmm. goth girls only beautiful long sleeve and we were just lamenting over the fact that today is actually 327 uh, march 27th and it would have been cool if it lined up but today's actually 326 which we all know what that day is right mm-hmm. here let me give you a hint the girls in that movie are 11 years old, old enough to go to Hogwarts. And you know who's old enough to go to Hogwarts? I don't know where this is going. Mr. King Cobra's his birthday yesterday. Oh, he yeah, turned he 31 years old. And uh, before, Halloween. We started, before we started recording, you mentioned how uh, there's a new video out about how his dad wouldn't celebrate his birthday with him because he was too drunk by the time he showed up to pick him up. And, and how depressed it made you. It, got, <laughs> it was so, I was like, man. And I just want to give a shout out to Cobra, who is clearly in the uh, new direction of his channel, which is just being a full-blown alcoholic. So for you, Cobra, happy birthday and... Uh, red wine. Red wine. Red wine. Red wine. When did he turn heel? Uh, you know, honestly, I don't think he did. He's been consistent, and life is hard. And he's just, always been a heel. No, I think he's always just been a genuine dude. But he puts his whole life on camera, all of it. And I mean, it's been not fun to watch recently. And again, I know this is kind of a callback. I haven't been talking about Cobra forever, but if you've been around the show, you know. And I promise not to take up much more time. But um, his crowd, the culture, has turned. And that chat is not fun anymore. And they're really mean to him. So that's kind of why I don't watch it anymore. But like like you mentioned before we started recording, Bite Size put up a new video yeah. about his birthday. So I also want to bring in Oksana Valeria Nova Osachi. Uh, Oksana, how are you today? I was great until I found uh, a Google search suggestion that says King Cobra JFS's teeth. <laughs> oh yeah yeah it's bad it's there's a lot of some... pictures Holy I, I don't want to see that i do not want to see that I at mean, all he's been de- he's been depressing for a long time but now he's also like mean no he's not don't give him a bad can you confirm like that. that russell's kind of cut back on his cobra intake yeah absolutely okay that's no, good. a lot. I used to watch every video he posted. I am aware. <laughs> and I would communicate with our homie, um, Zach Carter, over at Severn and Intervision. And uh, he had a kid. Yeah. I mean, honestly, he was my guru into Cobra. He sure. showed us the documentary Gothic King Cobra. Yeah. Thanks again, Zach. Yeah, and <laughs> shout out to uh, Zach. He uh, partakes in Severn's podcast, and I highly recommend y'all listen to it. It's a lot of coverage on the movies they're about to put out, but... um. This, I actually pulled a clip from it. I don't know if I want to play it right here, though. Do you want to hear a clip? No. Let's kick it off with a clip. I got to bring in Randy. Okay, bring in Randy, then, then we'll talk about also it. Also joining us from Atlanta, Georgia. He just told us last night he passed by Tyler Perry's studio. He waved hello. <laughs> it's Greg and Michael Stapp. That's me. I can't confirm that I did drive past Tyler Perry Studios last night. And uh, yeah, you're talking to me, uh, named after Aziz and Zari's best character, Randy. What? Is that? <laughs> what the oh, fuck? I love that two seconds of silence there. Whoa, I was, uh, I had my heart palpitating. Randy, what is going on today? You, you don't know, know about what? Aziz and Zari's character, Randy, dude? I know all That's like 18 years old. I know Randy, dude. I don't know Randy. Also, Aziz and Zari's best character was in Observe and Report, where he played a guy at the cell phone thing that loved Chick fil A. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great movie, by the way. I'm glad we're talking about comedy. Because that's gonna be <laughs> that's gonna be a theme today. So everybody oh, yeah. uh, listening now, buckle also, up. Also, I want to close the book here. You were talking about you know <clears throat> below the the waist here. Yeah, I've I've made a life choice here. 
I've uh, changed. I've told you. You talked was, about diapers I already. I was thinking about doing it, and I pulled the trigger, and I'm rolling it with it right now. Oh. I'm going, Randy, I went, I'm going old school briefs now, baby. Okay. I got out of the boxer game. I'm going tidy whities not white. Not because I understand who the villain is, and not a boxer brief. You're going straight, straight briefs. All right, your thighs are going to burn, baby. No, my thighs are doing good. I had a nice two mile walk yesterday in the briefs, and they're not hugging each other and grinding. It's good. I don't know. Wait till your wait till your pants give out. I here's what you need to know. (laughs) I did moisturizing powder before. Oh, what the fuck? That's that's I'm not an idiot. (laughs) You got a powder? What do you powder too, Randy? Uh, I do. I will when it gets hot here again, for sure. Dude, oh my if, god! If you don't powder when it's hot, you're not doing it right. This is why you two are single. You probably bring no. a girl home. Your she sees you powdering your shit. She's gonna suck on that powder. <laughs> <laughs> they don't want your crotch to smell like a baby, dude. No, she's gonna come up looking like an antique shop. <laughs> I'm mostly worried about the uh, the butt being powdered. Oh, god. I don't. I don't do the front as much as I do the back. Well, you got to get in the gooch. <laughs> yeah. If, hey, if I could powder my whole like chest and back because I'm so hairy underneath my shirt, I would. Well, oh Randy, my God. you can do that. <laughs> you can totally powder that. No, awesome. that's hard. I, I, no, if, use a towel. If I had uh, live editing a options, I would totally isolate Randy saying if I could powder my whole. And just <laughs> put it right there. I am looking for someone to shave my back. All right, Oksana. So as... Can we put that out? Can I task rabbit that? Yeah, don't ask me. Seems like a Craigslist type of thing. <laughs> Wait, hold on. We do have a female perspective on this show. So, uh, Oksan, how do you feel about these males talking about powdering their thighs? <laughs> I didn't know anyone did that. <laughs> got to powder, dude. They don't, is what I'm saying. No, they do. <laughs> you are out there in the world, okay? Randy and I are out there, single men, mingling in the streets. Yeah, okay, okay. <laughs> we're out there fighting the battle you've been off the battlefield for quite some time the game has changed if you don't powder your thighs goodbyes <laughs> is what you will hear all right i'll have to take your word i guess i'm just out there dude women want a well manicured man yeah this is what they want you gotta trim it down there not turtle shell okay <laughs> And plus, I've got to shave my shaft, so i got a lot of things going on. Oh. oh, my God. All right. Well, if you've tuned in for Up5, sorry. This is what you're getting. <laughs> but, yeah, Up5 Uf, is done. It was a lot of fun. It was fun. I don't really want to talk no, about it. No, we had a good time. I know. Um, <laughs> no, it, it, it was really good having a lot of filmmakers in. Um, a who, lot of them. The majority of them hung out for the majority of the festival. And that, that, that was uh, honestly surprising to see. Um, and I'd love to see that because I feel like if I were in their shoes, I would dip in, dip out. Um, so people to hang around and build community, because honestly, that's what that's what it is, right? Yeah, yeah. We we want to do this thing, um, you know, to show films that typically aren't shown in theaters, and we were able to do that. And also, we want to, you know, obviously work with the filmmakers there and be respective to their films, be respectful to their films rather, and uh, just try to. Yeah, have the best in theater experience. And if I need to go and change the sound on the uh with the projectionist three times during the <laughs> runtime of a movie, I will happily do so. Yeah. And it turned out for the better. Um and uh, you know, just uh we we met great people and these are people that we obviously we had talked to on the show. Uh, but you know, to meet them in person, uh it's great. You know, those guys from the Alien Report, that's next level, man. Kevin and Patrick were yeah. great. Uh Kevin uh, excuse me, Patrick has an energy of a person that I don't know as that's ever been. Well, it looks like he drained all of Kevin's energy, man. Kevin... <laughs> <laughs> I think you're right. Everybody who came out, we've pretty much had on the show, right? Yeah, we're great. Yeah. I didn't think of it that way. Yeah, incredible. And again, uh, my man crush, uh, Jorge Torres Torres came out again. And again, if you, if you made it out to FTW, which of course is fuck the world, Thank you for bearing with us because the gods tried to shut down our film fest and we kicked it off. We kicked it off strong, honestly. Had a lot of momentum and power outage right away. Yep. And then rumors of an earthquake. And it's like, oh, maybe we, maybe our cover art is kind of like not the most fun now. As uh, <laughs> maybe San Francisco is sinking into the water. But we made it through. We're still here. Yeah. And, and you know, we talked about it and it's always the first film. Yeah, dude. It's always the first film of the day. 
first film of the festival. It's yeah. going to give you problems. And uh, it's funny because Jorge said that too. He's a man's always the first film. And I'm like, well, I feel bad now you acknowledging that because we opened with it. But really, you know, our programming this year was headier, kind of like more challenging films early. And then as we roll on, it gets easier. And I think that worked out great. Yeah. Like people actually came up and were like, hey, by the time I started feeling exhausted, the film started getting a lot more like casual and like, uh, honestly, more horror. Well, especially with Saturday, because Saturday, honestly, FTW kicked it off. But then we went pretty much we stayed hard. The rest yeah. Of the night. Oh, man. And people hung out with it. Like, you know, we have the uh, the privilege of looking at audience votes because everybody votes and dude, everything ranked really high. Yeah. Like, I'm kind of shocked. I, we have a great crowd. And if you came out and you're listening uh, dude, thank you so much. It was incredible. And I constantly check with the Balboa because, you know, it's their home. We're just visiting. And I checked in regularly being like, hey, anybody giving you problems? And they just said, honestly, like, uh, this is the coolest crowd every year. And that's why we love having you here. And so, that is why Dread Central named us the best film festival yeah. in the history of the world. Yeah. <laughs> isn't, that what that, isn't that what the list was? Uh, that's what I saw. That's what I saw. Yeah. So, so again, against Dread Central. And if you're feeling FOMO like you should for not coming out to the Bay Area and hanging out with us, uh, we do have an online fest on my birthday, May 7th. We decided we really want to like celebrate me because I've done everything here. This is my podcast, my film fest. In fact, all of the filmmakers that have ever been on here owe their career to me. Yes. So I, I can't wait for May 7th. <laughs> I can keep going. How many, how many candles you burn on May 7th? You turn oh, 30. Don't bring that shit up. How dare you? 37. No, it's good. It You'll God, be- it is 37. 37, because I'll be 36. See, I'm in no man's land. Once you start getting, like, rounding up to 40. Do you graduate in 03 or 04? 03? 03. 03. And it was a miracle. <laughs> thank, you to, thank you to everybody who let me graduate did in 03. Did you graduate? I did. But I was the kind of student where everybody's like, you know, because I had many parent-teacher conferences, and they would be like, you know, he's very smart, and he could do it, but yeah. he doesn't do any work, and uh, he doesn't test well because he doesn't know what we're doing. Like... Yeah, that was my thing too. But like, yeah. I was just stuck in such a bubble where I didn't really have a choice but to be like, I gave minimal amount of effort, but I had like a 90 average. Okay. Yeah. And I was like, you know, I knew, I knew what was going to get me into college. Mm-hmm. I was like, all right, we shot for that. And, and you went w- to college. Yeah. 2.2 2 GPA. I think I had a 1.8 graduating. I was under two. Your BAC is higher than that. What is that? Blood alcohol content. Oh, yeah. Recurrently. Good, good, good. I am celebrating uh, Cobra's birthday with some red wine. Red- no, I was going to play it again. I decided <laughs> not to. Although I do have a clip. And I want to plug again um, Cobra and Zach. You know, he introduced me to him. And uh, Severn Podcast, I love it. Do any of you listen to it in no. here? Negative. You should. And uh, normally it is kind of like a Blu ray DVD thing. They sponsor, I'll listen. Okay, I'll I'll let them know. But this, Game on, this last week, they were covering uh, Mardi Gras in the Big Sleazy. So they're putting out a uh, collection of um, no, uh, New Orleans filmmaker. But that's not what I want to talk about. They also had some guests on the show that you wouldn't know from their uh, metadata because it's kind of buried down there. But they had Josh Miller and Pat Casey on. Do those names ring a bell? No. They wrote your favorite movie, Sonic. They wrote Sonic 1 oh. and 2. And I saw that they were on the uh, Severn Cellar. Yeah, okay. Because I watched the Severn that Cellar. That makes sense. And uh, they, I guess Severn's putting out one of their horror movies, because the two had made a bunch of horror yep. movies in college. Yep, yep, yep. I know that. So they put out Hey, Stop Stabbing Me. Yeah. And again, now, because this is a comedy-heavy episode, okay, okay. I wanted to pull a clip just to get everybody hooked on it. And they're, they're talking about this bit that they've used a couple of times. It's very short. Hang with me. And... Uh, yeah, here, here's a clip from the Seven podcast. Recycled a gag from Hey, Stop Stabbing Me in, in several things we've done. And I, I now, now would have been fitting if we'd somehow recycled it for Sonic as well. But it is like, yeah, the gag in Hey, Stop Stabbing Me where the guy's stabbed. Are you hurt? Yeah, dude, you're going to have to help me pull this out. All right. <laughs> oh, 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 no, I'm bleeding worse. Quick, put it back in, put it back in. <laughs> Spot, you idiot! Now I'm stabbed twice. Quick, apply pressure. No, to the wound, not to the stick. Are you an idiot? I don't know what I'm doing. 
We used it both in Dorm Days 3, Transylvania, and then also on Angola and the Insatiable. Season 2. And we did the entire, the entire bit. Uh, Maybe in Sonic 3. It's a good bit. It's a good bit. And uh, again, um, we're going to go down the comedy road, and I don't know how strong you're going to react to the other clip I have for later, so I want to start it off good. You know my feelings on Sonic. I know you love it. It's It's good. That's why when it came up, I was, like, my gut reaction is like, oh, Sonic, what the fuck? But then, I'm like, "Ah, everybody, like, really likes that movie. Dude, I am down for Sonic 2. And I'm not familiar with Golan or Transylvania, but uh, honestly, that podcast- You have homework to do. Yeah, and that podcast sold me on it. I'm mm-hmm. I'm going to be buying that. Also, um, I'm clip heavy today because again we skipped an episode last week. Uh, Clark literally had to talk me off the work ledge. I was trying to do something. He was like, "Dude, don't. It's a busy weekend." Uh, thank you. I think. I- and we give this to you <laughs> for free. Yeah, I just I wanted to be consistent and um. And I'm glad you did, and I came back with a passion, and uh, I wanted to give you a warning that I started reading a book uh, called Western Noir. You've told me this no less than 14 times. I, well, I told you this during the interview that's coming up on Thursday. And two days prior. Oh, I did. That's what oh, I talk about a lot. Well, I hope I'm you're ready. I'm excited for it. I hope you're ready because I want to, I think we need to kick off a Western segment and uh, we need some cool bumper music. I was going to make it, but I, I forgot. Well, in the, Actually, word, in the words of Cosmo Kramer, Giddy up. Yeah, giddy up. I do. I was thinking about that. But you know what? We do have an email address that I'm not going to try and say because I fuck it up every time. But if you want to cut some bumper music, which uh, we've had people do in the past, send it to me and I'll use it next week. But get ready for uh, Western coverage. Noir Western. Love it. Uh, I think that's all I have. We have notes. What else were we supposed to plug before we call in our buddy? Chicken surprise. Oh. Cobra birthday of... Chicken surprise, seven days left from today, which is Sunday. So next Sunday, that means you have like five days from the duration of uh, when you were listening to this episode to go and contribute to the aforementioned chicken surprise from filmmaker Connor... (laughs) McGregor. (laughs) <laughs> there you go. I, I wasn't going to try and pull it. Connor, we love you, man. And um, Girls Night, he shot that movie. Chicken Surprise, we were pushing this a while ago. Dude, they got pretty close to their very humble um, goal. So everybody go out there, do $75. They're asking one. for sixteen hunch, dude. Yeah. fifteen nine five. Randy's got that in his back pocket. <laughs> <laughs> Randy, you could be the EP of Chicken Surprise. I might be by this time next week. We'll there see. we go. EP, Randy Stapp. Yeah, two grand, you buy the movie. And uh, we also have Uff merch still available. It's it's funny. A lot of people ordered it at the fest, and it started coming in. And uh, I'm not going to brag or anything, but those hoodies look fucking good. I ordered one. I was doing good for a while, intermittent fasting, working out all the time. Yep. Both of those things have kind of wavered since the film fest. Got a hoodie, can't fit in it. Mm. So great Thank job. You. Yeah. I'm going to go round two on ordering. <laughs> I'm see, not joking. But by see, the I way. do that now. I'll, I'll buy clothes that are smaller so that I can work to get in them. Yeah. And sometimes it works. I, it's <laughs> never worked for me. Also, I hoard clothing that I can't currently fit in. Then I'm like, yeah, but that'll be the goal. But see, now I'm in this like purgatory to where like I don't want to buy something that fits good now because in a couple months it won't fit at all. You got to live your life. You baby. know what I mean, Dave? You got to live your life. <laughs> Do you have that problem with your watches? You're like, I need to get a smaller band here. I, I, I need to dump some watches. Why? I need to get rid of some. I got too many. No, they accrue in value. No, some of these are trash. Really? I need to get rid of the trash ones. You were, you were pumped about them when you got them. The good ones. Okay. <laughs> I got some bad ones. What are you getting rid of? Let's throw them out there. Some fashion brands. Ones that they're just not good. All right. Shoot an email. We'll I've send st- you I'm a Clark up watch. My game. <laughs> we'll have Clark autograph a watch and we'll send it to you. Oh, yeah. Right, that's cool. No other podcast is doing that. I was talking. Um, <laughs> I was talking to a friend of mine one time. And they were they were talking about uh, guys on dating apps. Oh no! And uh, also just sending them unsolicited dick pics. Okay. And one, um, she uh, several times <laughs> gotten a picture of a penis with a watch around it. Really? Yeah. And really? To show Do girl. you get the balls in there too, or just the? <laughs> 
I, I could I feel like I've seen that to show girth. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I, you know, the problem there is the attitude of the dude that goes with the uh, watch wearing wiener. Well, my first thing was like, what kind of watch are we got? <laughs> also, do you ever like sniff the bottom of your watch? What? I used to do that when what I played. What does that mean? When I played basketball all the time, because it would stink under it's there. Sweaty. Yeah, what? it's gross. What? Why are you smelling it? <laughs> because I wanted. To, I was insecure about it. I'm like, can other people smell that weird watch odor? What kind of band do you have? I don't remember. It was a plastic watch. It was something you would have never worn. Okay, first of all, I have a G-Shock, and I love my G-Shock. I'm wearing it right now. Oh, where? Like this? In your nether regions? <laughs> yep, that's right. It's on the shelf. You got any swatches? Randy, don't insult me, dude. <laughs> actually, Swatch, Swatch brand is fine. Uh, Swatch Hell brand yeah. is actually a, a huge or, uh, they own. Technically, yes, I think I do have uh, some subsidiary brands that are owned by the Swatch group. <laughs> nice. I have a Swatch somewhere, but the band's broken. <laughs> they broke up, dude? Oh, RIP to our favorite band, Foo Fighters, as uh, the one, and, killed him, the one the and only dude who refused to learn his fucking lines. They had to off him. I, I know. They wanted to make another movie, and they're like, are you going to read the script? And he's like, nah, bro. Man, that was sad. Do we was it? He's yeah. 50. He had a hell of a life. He's 50. That fool was... He he refused to read his lines, dude. He's 50. He knew how to live. Do we know what Also, happened? I have no... I barely know the fool. Tyler? Taylor? Taylor. Taylor Hawkins, yeah. Compton? Um, what? How'd he go? He had 10 different types of drugs in his system when he died. Okay. Well, now, we do we still memorial mourn him? Yeah. I was going to say memorialize. It's a tough Mor world out there, dude. Well, how many of them were fentanyl? You would, <laughs> you would have more appreciation for this if you watched HBO's Euphoria. Oh, my God. Yeah, you're probably right. I do feel a little weird when people are like, I've been crying all day because Taylor passed away. <sighs> drugs are a hell of a drug, dude. But I don't know if I would feel that way about any band member like if fucking jonathan davis died right now i'd probably cancel the show if bruce dickinson died <laughs> you would be very sad when when uh, now honestly when, when brocky died when ronnie james dio died yeah i felt a huge uh gap in the world but i don't know i wasn't i don't it, there's something about posting about shit online and being like, oh, Cosby died. He what was about my favorite the, comedian. What about when the bassist of Three Inches of Blood dies? I thought you were going to say Deftones. <sighs> God. Because he did die. I've never said Deftones in my life. <laughs> I said Deftones to Mike Costanza, who's going to be our <laughs> interview later this week. Because he had an ICP poster in Collingswood that I never saw until <laughs> the beautiful restoration that we showed. Love it. It was great. It played right. went beautifully. What do we got up top? We got our guy. Well, we got to start the show officially. Yeah. All right, let's do it. He uh he was upset that we didn't do an episode last week. He actually he had the train already. His bags were what? packed. It's just it's the same bag of tricks with this guy. Oh, oh you think so? He's okay. got better things to do. He's had a week. He's had a week. He's gonna come in with fresh material. All right, tell him to bring it. Oh, you don't think so? Do you want to make a bet again? All right, it's Sunday, so what today would be day two of a. Uh... As long as he doesn't talk to Mr. President Putin. Okay, so you're saying. Uh, well, do you think he's going to go political at all? No. Okay, think, no political. No, I just think it's going to be the same boring shit. Are we going to have um, coffee? I think coffee. I think cookies? observation car. No observation cookie. Observation car. No, no cookie. cookie. <laughs> uh, weekend work train. All right, let's let him in. David. Good morning. It's March 27, 2022, and it's a Sunday. Day two of weekend projects. And today I'll be riding the fun work train. All right. Working with paper, oh. <laughs> tempera paint. Those are different. Wood glue and plenty of coffee. Okay. okay. Hell yeah. And with the hope oh. that this train is traveling toward a world of peace. Oh. A world at peace. My man. Wake up. Everyone, have a great day. All right. I, he must have heard you. Is he narcoleptic? <laughs> <laughs> narcoleptic is correct. I don't know why you said it, and I just, I thought it was wrong. Because you went necromantic, probably. Necro, yeah. I always go necromantic. 
<laughs> Dude, but paper? Uh, What kind of paint did he talk about? Wood glue. Yeah, I know wood glue, but paper, I've never heard him say paper. Normally he's like, rebar. Paper. S- say, no, not I'm paper. I'm making paper. <laughs> All right. Dollar bills. Well, you know, you know what time it is, right? Is it time? It's time for the return. The TBR Report. <laughs> Sponsored by POVHorror.com. I honestly really like that. Thank you. And, you know, we briefly we opened up uh, talking about a uh, 5. Uh, perhaps one of my favorite guests of the whole thing was uh, Thomas Burke of the TBR Report. He flew in from Brazil with some fresh new found footage and handed it off. And um, Thomas, we love you to death, dude. Thank you so much for coming out. It was great to have Tommy there. He, Met Tommy for the first time. Dude, he had to put the hold on at least seven movies that he was Tommy working on. Tommy Bahamas. When you're good, you work, baby. Dude, and he was, I could see, I was watching him when we were watching Bad Ben at the ATA. He was scratching. He was, he had the, he needed the fix, dude. Well, because we went outside and we smoked a couple ciggies together. Also, I, I know we're in the TBR report, but uh, talking to Nigel was a lot of fun. The internet was not on our side that night, but Nigel, dude, he was getting emotional. Dude, uh, Thomas, thank you for coming out. And also, thank you, Mary Beth. Um, and Mary Beth, yeah, yeah. Of course. I mean, the corporate, whatever. She was there the whole time. <laughs> Mary Beth, you know. Mary Beth did a lot of heavy lifting. Here's the thing. Mary Beth uh, came out for Dread Central, who has openly embraced found footage now that she's there. And uh, she had to fucking school everybody with her ghost watch shirt. Man, I felt like a goddamn chump. I'm like, we're putting on this film fest, but I'm constantly getting checked. I didn't checked. Even know she had a ghost, she had a ghost watch. watch shirt on. I didn't notice. Ah, no. That's because you weren't keeping an eye out, baby. Uh, because I was keeping an eye out that we were going to run a successful <laughs> festival. Yeah, well, I was the reverse bouncer, so I was hugging people until they turned around and went back in the theater. That was sure. my MO. Anyway, we we're in the middle of TBR report, and now I should set this up saying that Thomas sent this to us back in, like, the beginning of March. But uh, I've been holding on to it, and uh, I'm just going to read from the email now. So this is Thomas. Hey, y'all. Sorry I skipped a week during found footage February. <laughs> very timely but the good news is i've been editing a couple of new found footage movies that are close to being done including our quick but awesome collab on the barbados project Barbados. Yeah. uh we haven't talked about that we haven't announced that we haven't talked about that on here before but i don't uh, know if i want to buckle up uh when when the movie's out we'll warn you because <laughs> it's, it's it's gonna be fun anyway back to tom which uh, turns out being a found footage mockumentary creature feature, but keeping in the same vein of mockumentary, I wanted to recommend a lighthearted comedy this week. Anyone who might recall my obsession slash fascination with parallel worlds and science fiction might be interested in checking out The Mother of Invention about an inspiring and aspiring inventor who dreams of winning an annual Young Inventor Award. The only problem is he's never made an invention that works. The, this movie honestly holds its own it's light, entertaining, and has some cool cameos in it. And it features some rad music by the band Copeland. So all in all, it's just a really fun and compelling mockumentary, uh, which is available right now on Tubi and Voodoo for free. But you can also rent this puppy on Amazon and help support the filmmakers. Excited to hear your all thoughts. Happy found footage February, even though my tardy ass sent this on March 2nd. LOL. Sorry about that. Love you all. Peace. P.S. Listen to the song and watch this music video that haunts my dreams. And he included a link to YouTube. All the best, Thomas Burke. Um, I do know that band. You played it earlier. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. When we got on the call, I uh, opened it up with that music. Also, Russell. Russell. God. Also, Russell. I feel like there are a few words in the English language that could get you more uninterested than lighthearted comedy. I know. (laughs) And now I have a... uh, I have a little uh, theory here, and I think Thomas just really loves the band. Or, you know, Tom, he, he's... Copeland? Yeah. They're a well, Christian band. Oh! Yeah! <laughs> I probably haven't listened to them in, like, 15-plus years, but I used to listen Whoa. to them a lot. Dude, are they, like... What the fuck? Really? Yeah. Are they, like, Reliant K? I, Ish. They probably played together, like, a long time ago. What are you guys speaking? Bro, you know I Christian rock. Through- Deep owns I dude I don't know Copeland but I know Christian Rock baby. What the fuck? <laughs> okay, you um, don't know Reliant K? No. Sadie Hawkins dance in my khaki pants. There's nothing better. 
Oh, what? oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I talked about ICP and Deftones up top, bro. I think we were grew we grew up on different sides of the country, bro. JC knows how to rock, dude. Anyway, so Thomas, uh, I told I talked to him about this at the film fest, and I'm like, dude, you sent me a mockumentary that's an hour and forty five minutes long, and it's a comedy, and you called it a light hearted comedy. <laughs> I'm like, do you know who you're talking to? <laughs> Clark used to get mad at me because I had no palate. I didn't even have a tongue for a comedy. I couldn't understand it. I didn't know how to approach it. And I've been trying to get better. I don't know how I feel about this one, man. It um, There's a lot of cameos. So there's clearly a horror crossover here. We open up and D. Wallace is on camera. Oh, boy. And it's like, oh, okay. Then we have Mark Boone Jr., who's uh, son of anarchy. He's one of the cooler looking bikier guys. There's Who else is in this, Oksana? I'm... Chris Hardwick. Oh, and Chris Hardwick the shows up. Nerdist. He shows I can't up. Can't say that anymore. Nerdist is canceled. He showed up in Tidy Whities. My man. It's all coming together now. This is why you started wearing them again. Hey, let me tell you something right now. Without a doubt, Chris Hardwick is powdering those thighs. <laughs> Probably. You better believe it. His thighs don't touch though. <laughs> but he powders. I don't know why that felt mean. <laughs> Dude, Randy, do you have a thigh gap? I, honestly, I don't pay that much attention to my <laughs> naked body. I'm going to say maybe. Oh, my. Maybe. <laughs> Get familiar with your body, dude. Um. Anyway, this movie, I I didn't know. It's long. There's a lot of cameos in here. Uh, I, Hardwick is probably the most heavy hitting of them, yeah. just to give you a palette. Um, Does he do a Talking Dead episode in the middle of Oh, my God. Oh, I forgot about that. Dude, so... I had to re up my YouTube TV subscription because it's sports season again with Formula One. So, yeah. but now yesterday I was just like, God, I'm paying sixty five dollars a month for this for like once a week. Mm-hmm. So sometimes I'll just turn it on and try to find something to watch. They had an all day marathon of Breaking Bad yesterday, so I just had that on. Such a good show, but every now and he's still doing that shit. Oh my god! Wait, he got canceled? also the commercials that they had. I get, commercials on TV are horrible. Yeah, yeah. It's all either starving children. Oh, no. Or if you're old, here's a pill to make you poop again. <laughs> <laughs> Write that down next time. It's, I'm going to need Wait, it. did I say starving children? Yeah. I meant starving puppies. Oh, even worse. <laughs> oh, with just heart-swelling music and the saddest pictures of these fucking dogs you've ever seen in your life. No, I don't I don't. And it's that. the a- ASPCA, and it's like... If you donate $19 a month, we will send you a free t-shirt. And the t-shirt is like this Microsoft paint emojis of, and it says <laughs> pet champion on it. No, I'm not into that. It's horrendous. <laughs> um, do you know Jimmy Simpson? Yes. Okay, he's in it too. I like Jimmy Simpson. Okay, so the movie is about uh, Vincent Dooley, who's our main character, who is a... Um, uh, I want to call him lovable, but he's really not. He's kind of got the gothic King Cobra problem where Cobra actually, no Cobra. There's a human in there and there's good and bad. This movie, the problem I have with the mother of invention is you're doing a Michael Scott and you know, Michael Scott is tough because it's a tightrope act and you have to be mad at him, but you also have to want to protect him too. Yeah. Like, and it's really hard to do. And, uh, Michael Scott is probably the best example. And it's a faux doc, like The Office, which is what I don't like. Like, you know, The Office, they do the Christopher Guest shit. Well, where well they ne- Michael Scott's the best example for the American audience, but it was uh, first done by Ricky Gervais. Yeah, but he as, wasn't lovable. As David Brent. Yes, I, he was. I don't know. I didn't like him. And it could have just been a culture thing. Well, you don't like Ricky Gervais. I do like Ricky Gervais. Ricky I Gervais. think he's, I actually would probably like him in real life more than I would, um, what's his name? As David Brent. What the hell's what the hell? Steve Carell. Steve Carell. Thank oh. you. Yeah, dude. Carell's chill. Space I, Force is trash. He just seems boring. Is the thing. But anyway, in this movie, they're trying to do the Michael Scott with Vincent Dooley, except he's not likable. Also, when you're trying to do like the mockumentary thing, you can't root your comedy in an alternate universe. And what I mean by that is, remember when we were watching Middleman, and we talked yes. that this is a long callback. But it's a movie about stand-up comedy. And when you write a script and it's like, in this moment, he's going to, everybody thinks he's funny. The thing when you're filming a movie 
is he's really got to be funny. Otherwise, us, the audience is going to be like, no, what the fuck are they laughing at? And this movie's built out of that. In Middleman, they did it right. And uh, when there's moments that really have an emotional arc, but you, you know, everybody's going to look at comedy differently, they don't show it because they know how to, you know, make a film. In this one, we get, what was that movie a long time ago where uh, it was like one character and he was a survival guy, but he was on a reality show. Tex Montana. There you go. Tex Montana. I it's, know everything. It feels like that. Where it's like a dude who's playing a character that got a laugh at a party, and then they make a movie out of him riffing. Yeah. Except you're like, dude, you got to know when to stop. And this movie's that. And Vince Dooley is just riffing. And, you know, I, I have to be honest, I didn't hate all of it. But he's not a likable character. So you're stuck in this faux documentary, and the crew never interjects. And you feel like they should at times. Like, dude, why wouldn't you tell this dude to stop? And um, I have a clip. And I'm going to play it for you. And I've been trying to think of how I should set this thing up. So I'm just going to tell you, uh, Vince Dooley uh, with his camera crew is at a diner. And part of the story is that he's in love with a waitress. There. Is Guy Fieri there? No, Guy Fieri's not there. <laughs> that, that would have elevated the movie and um, or ruined Guy Fieri's career. And uh, you can't do it. He's, he's, he's bulletproof. Dude. He's, he's there with his camera crew. Now, he's taken some bad advice from a friend on how to get a girl. And he's applied sunscreen to his face uh, or tanning solution. And uh, he's in there now. And I've, I've two opposite things. I've it's tanning. He's supposed to be darkening. I'm and sure. I've edited this clip for time. So there's a couple of the beats. They didn't, I, it didn't ruin any of the Zazzy comedy. beats. I, I edited out Zazzy beats, but um, I'm going to play this for you. It's a minute. And then after I want your comedy breakdown of this moment, uh, here we go. Do you know what you want? I would like a date, champagne, caviar, the whole nine yards. I'd like to take you somewhere nice. Now, I don't have a car, so you'd have to pick me up. But we could meet at the restaurant as long as I can strap my bike to your hood afterwards. Don't worry. I have my own bungees. Now, I do live with my mother and my Native American stepfather. They're not too keen on me having guests over after 11, but I figure if you were to hide in my closet for, say, uh, 45 minutes max, then you can come out and stay up all night talking and laughing, just having a good time. Option number two, Wednesdays, trash days. Are you tracking with me on this one? You wait outside till it's dark. When I go out at night to take out the trash, you get inside the trash cans because my parents aren't expecting me to bring a girl in, but they are expecting me to bring trash cans in. You're what, 170, 180? That's okay. I can bench 350. I found out once on a dare. Once we're inside, we turn on my TV, put on one of my sci-fi movies, and all you got to do is pretend you're one of the girls from one of my movies. Say something about cyborgs killing off the entire human race, you know, really just to bring it home. Can you do a British accent? I'm sorry. Can we go back to what happened to your face? I'm part Brazilian, Jenny. And when I tan, I wind up looking like uh, that, that guy Seal from the Batman 3 soundtrack, <laughs> just without all the scars. Now... Honestly, I thought that was pretty good. And clearly the guy was riffing. Like he's like it's one camera. It's just on him. Yeah. A uh, little bit of a problem though. Now I pulled up I, I realize we don't have we're not a visual podcast, but hopefully Oxana could do something about this if we ever throw this online. Go ahead, Clark, look up at my monitor. This is how he looked in this moment. Uh there you no. You got some brown face going on? We got more oh. than brown face. He is uh I would say that is completely blackface. Uh, Borat would call him chocolate face. Also, uh, he makes uh, that that moment continues on longer. And he makes a comment about like rye bread and wheat bread and how her boss is a racist. And he probably uses the N word all the time. And I'm like, you know, me, I don't I, I wouldn't get up in arms about this. Clearly, he's not uh, trying to belittle any black people by doing this bit. But man, it's not in good taste either. Like he, the, the riffing was good. He had the visual element and you're looking at this guy look like that the whole time. Also, do you recognize his face at all? Yeah. This is Andrew Bowser. Uh, he's the guy that pops up on our YouTube all the time with weird goth dude. And it will be like a fake outside. Yeah. Oh, yep. yes. Because the voice, the voice. Yep. Yep. And I'm like, Alexana pointed it out and I'm like, Oh no. Because, man, I really fucking hate those videos. And to be completely honest, 
it's probably because I, I turn them on and I'm kind of into them at first. And I'm like, oh, it's scripted. Yeah. It's fake. So, I mean, I'm kind of a victim of the thing I complain about all the time where I'm like, if it were real, I kind of would have been into it. But yeah. when I found out they were lying to me, I, I'm completely out. Yeah. So I don't know. This one, uh, it's long. And um, uh, Jimmy Simpson, he plays a character that is supposed to be like uh, Steve Jobs. Like he's got the turtleneck on and everything. And he's he's his brother is Chris Hardwick. And the whole time you're just waiting for these two characters to collide because you think this is going to be like a stepbrothers kind of thing or they're going to go off it. I don't think they're ever in a room together. They never play off of each other. And I, if there was one thing I was waiting for, it was that, and it, it didn't happen. I do kind of like Randy. Hardwick v. Simpson. Not Hardwick, uh, our boy Andrew and Jimmy. Like, you're waiting, because they're the ones competing. And um, I don't know. I honestly think that Thomas just really likes that band Copeland. Because, okay, so part of this thing is uh, when we follow around um, Vincent Dooley, he's got all these ideas, right? We've met people like that. One of them is he makes a, a song called like cheers uh, tears of children or something like yeah. he cries tears of children <laughs> copeland made a real song about that right. like they took the little bit and built it out and uh can we make a note we could tweet that out if anybody wants if randy wants to check it out later i'm good okay <laughs> all right we'll tweet it out anyway um what did you think of that riffing it's good it was good right yeah okay how would you have felt if you saw that dude looking like this the whole time doing it i'd have laughed Okay, so you're not so blackface doesn't mean immediate racist that we should out him and like drag him through the streets and everything. He's he's trying to do something. He's not just doing it to do blackface. Exactly. So, and I mean Trudeau got voted in as president. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the, this week's TBR report. Does, does this guy have any problem with truckers? Here we go. <laughs> Oh, now that I do see he's wearing like a dashiki. <laughs> I don't know if that's helpful. Yeah, I uh, I don't know. He also painted his fingernails. He's a nut. Yeah, it's it ranges from funny to like brutally not funny. That what makes it funny, Dave. Yeah, I mean the Steve Jobs guy too. He he's won every year, and when he comes out with his invention, it's dude. His invention was he was going to change the beep noise on a microwave. And the audience is like, yeah. And I'm like, dude, I can't back that. That's not funny. <laughs> yeah. There All right. right. Speaking uh, of not funny, Bowser shows up on your YouTube page. He shows up when I'm playing Mario. <laughs> so long, me, Bowser. <laughs> Randy, you've never played a Mario game. You're not fooling anybody. Oh, uh, dude, I played the OG Mario games when I was very little on the <laughs> original Nintendo. Randy, you, you didn't fuck with uh, Mario 64, dude? I played Mario 64 a little bit. That's the best one. That's the best game of all I disagree. Time. I hated it. You Why? That's when I exited the Mario world. Dude, Mario 64 rips. I didn't like the look. And I feel the same way about Resident Evil. Like, when we started going into 3D environment, like, it, it evolved into a multiplayer game, which I loved. But, like, dude, I'm here for the pre-rendered backgrounds, baby. Two dimension. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Anything else before we kick it off? No more maybe? video game talk? I mean, I'm into it. Not a catastrophe crow. Dude, what about fucking deadware, bro? Hungry, hungry, what was it called? Hippos. <laughs> <laughs> you guys download Elden Ring yet or what? What did you say, Randy? You guys got Elden Ring yet or what? I don't know what that is. El <laughs> yeah, you're asking him? Uh, Elden, Elden Ring is a game that J.J. J.R.R. Martin worked on. Tight. Oh, it's a Souls game. I'm probably going to get it once I'm done with Cyberpunk. <laughs> God, <laughs> How hip am I? <laughs> God, Cyberpunk is the worst game I've ever seen. Fuck, it's adult Grand Theft Auto, so fuck off, dude. Grand Theft Auto is adult Grand Theft Auto. No. Just because you could bone a prostitute, a woman of the night. I'm sorry. Yeah, and drive a sick ass car. A working lady. You can get a beach while you're dr running from the police. <laughs> yeah, well, in Cyberpunk, they have fucking uh, OnlyFans that you can watch in your cyber eyes. So fuck off, dude. Yeah, well, I <laughs> skydived the other day. It was tight. <laughs> I, off a who, would, who would believe that? Yeah, you're in a squirrel suit. I wish I could get a squirrel suit. I'm trying. Let's do, we could get you one. As long as we can film it for the in show. In GTA. Oh. Thank you so They much. have one? No, that's what I'm saying. 
Uh, that seems like some. I mean, they have fucking rocket packs and shit, flying cars. I fucking hate those little douchebags <laughs> on those rockets. I fucked one up the other day. I was so happy because they they come at they're cowards. They fly around and you can't see them because they move so fast. I fucking nailed one the other day. Good, good job. They're up there vaping with their rocket pack. I fucking hate them. I feel like you just, I, there's, there's probably a 12 year old. <laughs> <laughs> this fucking scum. Do you have your mic on when you play? No. Why not? I don't talk to people. Dude, honestly, I think you'd have more fun if you were talking Hell shit. Hell no. Well, you can riff. No, no, no. I don't, no. Dude, get your black face on. It's get too, in the booth. Too real. Start riffing. It's the tap in the glass. <laughs> Why? You don't want to make fun of like 12 year old? That, no. That was the early internet for me I'm all just, day. Yeah, I've never, I've never done that. Dude, Call of Duty. Not my thing. Yeah, everything. Randy Michael. Yes, sir. I heard pray tell that you've watched some films this week, but you didn't have a good run of it. You saw so you couple you saw a couple of stinkeroonies. Your words, not mine. Yeah, I, I wouldn't say that I said that they were stinkeroonies, but I watched a couple <laughs> things that uh, you know, as the more that I get used to uh trying to speak on this program, I realize that. It is hard for me to talk about a movie that I don't really care about. So I'm going to skip those ones. <laughs> Randy, you give three stars to everything. That's not entirely true. Russell? They're all boring. What do you want? I think three and a half is like my, my uh, most rate, my rating that I use the most. It's because it's safe, Randy. When are you going to stop being safe and start, you know, putting that Living? metal closer Start being to real. The, metal. the real world. Yeah. I'm dude. out here, dude. <laughs> no, your road's rolling it. Real He's world rolling. Atlanta, Randy. That's me, dude. Driving by Tyler Perry Studios, not saying what's up. All right, what you got for us, son? Uh, yeah, I watched a movie like two and a half weeks ago or something on the Delta flight on the way to uh, San Francisco. Shout out to the Delta in-flight uh, movie catalog. They got some, some good stuff on there. I want to uh, note that the person in front of me started watching Spencer, got about seven minutes in. I, I tend to watch other people's screens. And then they turned on Resident Evil Raccoon City instead <laughs> for about 10 minutes. And then they went back to Spencer. And then I looked back Whoa. like five minutes later and then they were just like watching TV. They get, were dead. Get, I want to talk to that person. I know, same. But uh, they had this movie that I think is a Spanish film called El Planeta. Uh, it was playing at Plaza out here. Uh, a while ago, I think it only played for like a week, but it looked interesting. Um, and by interesting, I mean, it's filmed in black and white and it has a cute girl uh, <laughs> as the main star. A, a cute like. Exactly. Oh, uh, by the way, uh -huh. I uh, watched one episode of It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, which I haven't done in years. Mm -hmm. Again, it's on Hulu and I, bought, I have Hulu and I don't watch Hulu and I'm like, I'm going to turn on something. Turn on. Always sunny. Episode I landed on. What's the first thing they talk about? A meat cute. Oh, a meat cute. And it's the exact conversation we had on this <laughs> show. Oh, really? And I came to the stark realization that there is no originality and we're all fucking hacks. No, I came to the realization they're copying us. No, because they were like, oh, you mean meat cube? Oh, they had the same conversation God. we had. Yeah, so... Fuck everything, and this is the last episode of the show. <laughs> Randy, as you were. Uh, yes, yeah, this movie is, I don't know, it's like under 90 minutes. Um, it's pretty short. It is kind of like a deadpan comedy. It feels kind of uh, mumblecore-y a little bit. Um, but basically, it is like a, a film. Mumblecore Feldman? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, it's a film essentially like about a mother and daughter uh, living in Spain. Uh, it's apparently loosely based on a real life um spanish mother daughter uh petty crime duo justina and anna bellin um so essentially they are living in uh guion in spain Nailed and it. um there's kind of like you know uh economical like stuff going on it's kind of they're not doing super hot so they go out and they uh essentially like start scamming people or just doing these very like low level sort of scams, um, some shoplifting, stuff like that in order to, uh, just like live life. Cause they just, they just want to hang out and have a good, good time. Good, good relationship. Um, what's his name shows up early on, 
um, who directed that movie Nacho. that we, Nacho Vigalondo. Nacho. He shows up like five minutes in, and um, they're talking. You think they're on a date or something, but then uh, essentially they're like getting into a conversation about. Uh, some sort of like a, a sex work situation, and I don't remember oh. exactly, but I think I think he says that he likes to get pissed on in the movie, and this was like very early on, so I was like, okay, I don't know where this movie's going, but um, yeah, I don't know. It's uh, it is also kind of what Thomas Burke said about your previous movie. It's kind of like a kind of like a light lighthearted uh, sort of like a dead deadpan comedy. Uh, it's shot really well. Um, the black and white is like super crisp and looks nice and um yeah i don't know it's it's a uh, it's not something that i loved but i thought it was like interesting enough and like was kind of cool that they had it on delta because it's uh i don't know just a small indie film i guess she the director amalia ullman is like a uh more of like a, i don't know just like an artist or a performance artist um in new york and this is the first movie she's directed we got to get the uh, program director of Delta on the show. <laughs> Talk to him about how he makes his selections over there. No, Randy makes a good point because I remember years ago, I, I think I flew Delta on the way back home from Boston, and uh, I believe Tribeca had like a channel on there, and I watched uh, several short films um, that were there through Tribeca. That was uh, cool. <laughs> yeah. They got a lot of good stuff. I probably would have watched something on my way home if my flight wasn't at six ten a.m. and I was up at like four. But yeah, a lot of good stuff. You you, you hit the snooze button on the flame. You you able to catch some Z's? Yeah, you know, not like a uh, solid sleep, but I slept most of the time in and out. Now, Randy, you can sleep in most environments. Is this correct? Yeah, I think something's wrong with me. Once I sit down and like <laughs> am not moving or like eating or like snacking on something like i'll just pass out a lot of times what's the most uncomfortable uh seat or the most uncomfortable position you've ever been in and then you fell asleep i mean i've slept on hardwood floors before with no cushion of any kind like a, a blanket maybe not not much how thin was this blanket it's pretty thin i don't <laughs> know this is like 10 years ago <laughs> 10 plus years ago on tour you ever fall asleep on the throne, dude? No, never. All right. I'm quick. Oh. I'm in and out. <laughs> He's very quick. He's got those rabbit pellets. They just plop out and then he moves on. Dude, Randy takes a shit in the time it takes me to piss. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, great uh, metric of measurement there. Let me let me rephrase. Randy takes a shit in the time it takes you to piss. Oh, well, <laughs> you could do a two-mile jog in that time. <laughs> It's really a bummer, dude. Oh, I forgot to mention, we went out and watched a movie um, with our former guest, Colin. He worked on a zombie film called Them. And uh, I had a couple of beers before uh, entering Piano Fight. You're not going to save this till the end? No, I'm, I'm not going to cover it. I'm going to do it super quick right now. You're just going to take on Randy's time. I just, I had to pee. Hell yeah. And because it's theater sitting, <laughs> shitting, uh, I was blocked in. So, dude, I had to pee two times that during sucks. this fucking movie. Mm. And I, I kept thinking. If I go pee, I'm gonna miss a whole act of this movie. That's the thing. I didn't want to get up and pee during X. Now here's the thing: when Clark goes to pee, the movie gets better. Or when he <laughs> goes to cook dinner, or when he goes to vape, or when he goes to change his I watch. Haven't vaped in a day. <laughs> yeah. So back, uh, back to you, Randy. Thank you for that little uh, interlude. Sure. Yeah. Second uh, movie that I watched that I actually dug this week is a Vinegar Syndrome release that played at Weird Wednesday uh, in your guys' neck of the woods, uh, the Alamo Draft House in San Francisco, like a month ago, maybe a month and a half. Um, I saw, you know, the Alamo post about it and I, I peeped the trailer and it looked like a very, a very Randy movie, which is another <laughs> black and white movie uh, out of Sweden from like the 60s. It is like a Cold War era kind of like Dr. Strangelove, like farce, comedy. Um, Serge Gainsbourg is in it. He acts in it, and he actually performs a song in the movie. Um, it's a whole lot of fun. If you uh, are a Vinegar Syndrome person, uh, they have a, a Blu-ray, which is what I watched this on. I uh, rented it from Videodrome out here. Shout out again. And uh, yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun. If you like things like Dr. Strangelove or uh, Alphaville, the Jean-Luc Godard film, um yeah it's a lot of fun there's like uh, it's even some like goofy stuff um in it 
I don't know. It's 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 really good, and it uh, it's you know, it's ninety minutes from nineteen sixty seven, directed by John Lewis Roy. That's it's a good, good time. Movie. Again, I've been finding random because there was there's this, and then there's a movie I talked about that I rented there, uh, maybe like f- three months ago, called uh, Tomorrow I'll Wake Up and spill tea on myself or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> From the Czech Republic, is that right? Something like that, yeah. Both uh, would be great together or both would be great double features with Strange Love or something like that. So keep a finding very, these random Cold War era um, comedies. A very randy movie. <laughs> Blackface and White Guilt. That's me. <laughs> Randy, I feel like Videodrome should sponsor your segment on the show. I know. They should. I should talk to them, except for I don't talk to people. So uh, you, you make me talk. You should broadcast from there. Yeah, right. yeah, sure. Or book the dude. Let's talk to the Videodrome guy. Oxana, reach we out could to probably do that, this, actually. Uh, video yeah. rental place in Atlanta to see if they'll sponsor <laughs> Randy. Yeah, right. The <laughs> and then get the Delta film programmer, too. On it. Damn. <laughs> All right, Randall, get anything else? No, I guess I didn't uh, say the title of the movie while I was uh, saying that. It's The Unknown Man of Shandigor. Ooh. I mean, it rolls right off the tongue. <laughs> I'm surprised yeah. you didn't bring it up. I watched three films oh, fuck this yeah. week. Good job. Now, it's We Got the Good, <laughs> We Got the Bad, Oh no! and We Got the Ugly. All right. What do you want? Let's go ugly. Ugly. Well, it could go either way. Ben Affleck. <laughs> <laughs> with the ugly, I will go with a... This film had been on Hollywood's radar for a while, okay? It was going to be the erotic thriller of the year. Okay. Now, here's... You may not know this about me, Russell John, but I like an erotic thriller, okay? And if you're going to do an erotic thriller, there's one guy who is the king of the titillating picture. Mm -hmm. That is Adrian Lin, director of Indecent Proposal, Fatal Attraction, Nine and a Half Weeks, Unfaithful, Lolita Remake, also Jacob's Ladder. (laughs) (laughs) And he directed Deep Water from this year, starring Anna Diarmas and Ben Affleck. We also got uh, Randy Michael. We have a Tracy Letts nice. in here. He plays a douche. <laughs> uh, we got Dash Mihawk in here. Uh, we got little little Rel is in here. Lil Rel, hell yeah! Like, what a what a the boy. This thing. Okay, here's here's where Deep Water stinks. <laughs> if you're going to make an erotic thriller, how about you make it erotic? Mm-hmm. Make me horny, Hollywood. <laughs> it wasn't a very Randy movie. No, she's like cucking in the whole time. And you're they're, not into that? Play- I thought you'd be <laughs> into that. He's not into it. It's a weird thing. They're playing power games with one another. Essentially, Ben Affleck plays a guy who is retired now because he invented the computer chip that goes inside drones. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck yes. You. So for drone warfare, he created the technology to do that. So. Um, he's retired. Also, they film this in New Orleans. However, it's not a New Orleans movie. They make it seem like it's New England, but it is very clearly New Orleans. Yeah, what the but fuck? But it doesn't feel like New Orleans. It's very strange. I don't like it. <laughs> also, they go mountain biking. No one goes mountain biking in New Orleans. What are we doing? <laughs> it's very strange. If you're in New Orleans, embrace that. That's all I'm saying. Um, you know, we understand the tax breaks in, in Louisiana. Yeah. That's great. But, you know, fucking commit. Um, it just made it stilted and weird. But Anna de Armas plays his wife, and she has a new boyfriend every week, essentially. And the whole town, because they had these giant parties, and and everyone's like, you know, Ben Affleck, you need to keep an eye on your wife. She's about to fuck this dude. And he's like, I know. <laughs> He's like, I know, I have a drone following well, her. <laughs> as it turns out, she has had previous boyfriends, and then they go missing. Oh. And then he comes hey, out. Hey, I'm in. And then he threatens the new boyfriend saying, have you heard about so-and-so? They're like, oh, yeah, he went missing. Yeah, I killed him. 
Oh, okay. And then the rumors go around that he starts killing him, and he's like, I didn't kill him. Well, spoiler alert, guys, he killed all of them. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just the, the, the tension they're trying to build is just not there. Do, uh, he's raising snails in the basement. Whoa, there what? we go. I was about to ask about that. Yeah, there's there's a uh, lot that, of snails. Was that the original title? <laughs> yes, raising snails. That's a better title. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it's just it's just boring and it's not titillating. It's not sexy at all. I don't know the way you uh, you rolled out that scene. I imagine Ben Affleck in a party, crowded party, but it's like Hitchcock notorious. Like the cameras up on the second floor, we're looking down. Yeah, and he's like, I killed him, and then all these drones rise up, <laughs> and he's just like, Do you know I invented the chip that powers oh. the drone? <laughs> God, it's just it's a mess. They're powered by uh, snails. They're piloting them. It's Dude. two. It's two hours long. Oh nope, I'm out. It two sounded fun, long. and then no. If it was Casey, I'd be in. Oh my god! Here's the thing, I like Ben Affleck in this thing. He, you know, he's got a good, he's got a head for Hollywood. What he was does. that sports movie he was in that we saw both separately right before the pandemic? Oh, Basketball Jones no, or whatever. Randy, I thought did we see it separately? I thought we saw it together. I think Maybe we saw it on the it, same weekend in different places. Did. No, it was together, and we were in a movie theater. I was in the middle. You were holding hands yeah, over and, my lap, and we, I very... believe I saw it in Alameda. Oh. We didn't like it. Right. You he was okay. I don't know. Uh, I do I'm like with, Ben Affleck. I was just oh, kidding. I, what is that stupid ass movie called? The Cancer Basketball Movie. The Way Back. Yeah, it's. Uh, nice. yeah, yeah. Um. <laughs> anyway, yeah, Deep Water. It just, man, it's it's not horny enough, dude. Dude, Deep Water. I instantly thought of a shark movie when you're like, "Oh, I watched Deep Water." Yeah. I'm like, "Oh, okay." I also, have guessed that. the reason you know how he gets caught, but. He gets away. All right. Um, can we can we label that we spoiled the who Potter, please? cares? You know, we get so much flack when people see a movie on these Tuesday episodes that they want to watch. They skip the fucking episode. They should skip this movie. I'm <laughs> saving them two hours. I'm going to watch it. That's a good argument. Also, Randy's not going to watch it. I might watch Where's it because uh, I'm going to be very shallow this episode because Anna de, de Amaris is hot. Here's okay. the thing. She, she's very attractive. Uh, I mean, you can't you can't not say that. And also, she's gonna she's playing Marilyn Monroe, and from oh, and yeah. she looks amazing. Yeah, Marilyn she looked good Monroe. in that. Yeah, but like, I don't. There's nothing there. Also, Randy, you have the internet. Why don't you just Google her and look at images for something? <laughs> oh no, she's she's just a face. She has she's no underlying sexiness. No talent. Me. Like Maggie Gyllenhaal has an underlying sexiness about her. I don't know. Not Anna de Armas. I think, She's just like, look at my pretty symmetric face. Yeah, beauty's in the imperfections. And yeah, uh, Randy, you're you're a robot, clearly. Yeah. <laughs> Second movie. This falls under the bad category. All right. And uh, man, I did. I really want to like this. Michael Jackson bad or? This is uh, theaters in theaters now from director Graham Moore. Um, I believe this is his directorial debut. Um, you would know Graham Moore as an Oscar award winning writer for the imitation game, uh, from 2014 that he did with Benedict Cumberbatch. And, uh, now he's, uh, directing, he's behind the camera now, uh, not behind the typewriter. All right. <laughs> <laughs> this is the outfit. Starring Mark Rylance. Another uh, out movie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, never mind. <laughs> I, I was, you said deep water. I was thinking out waters. Yeah, there we go. There we you go. got <laughs> up on the brain, dude. Shout yep. out to Robbie Banfinch. I will watch anything Mark Rylance does. I think he's infinitely entertaining. I just like his thing. Oh. I, I like his face. <laughs> Is there a watch on it? <laughs> <laughs> Very good. He's a classy man. He's probably got a he's probably got a nice, you know, uh a Rolex date just with the uh, Jubilee bracelet. It's probably very nice. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. Jubilee. <laughs> <laughs> Essentially what um an expert tailor must outwit a dangerous group of mobsters oh, no. <laughs> in order to survive a fateful night. What the fuck? God, this is okay, guys. Guess what? Cue it up again. <laughs> I'm spoiling the yeah. Oh my god. This is, this is nobody, but set in the 1940s and 1950s mob Chicago. Um, with, but here's what I do like about it. 
I like limited storytelling and I like limited spaces. We are in one shop the whole movie. We're in his tailor shop. Now, also, he does not refer to himself as a tailor. He's a cutter. Oh. I'm a cutter. I was trained on the row, that Savile Row, where they make fancy suits for British people. <laughs> and a joke that I enjoyed the first time, but he repeated the joke 19 times oh, in the movie. No. Where, where someone, and they called him English because he's his English and he's in Chicago. Okay. I, okay, English, make me a suit, see? <laughs> <laughs> And uh, they were like, English, why'd you leave, why'd you leave, uh, why'd you leave, uh, you know, tea and crumpet land over there? <laughs> what? And he's like, well, I left because of the war. And he's like, oh, the Nazis? No, blue jeans. Oh, my God. <laughs> the enemy wasn't Nazis. It was blue jeans. This is the bad movie? I feel like you loved it. Man, it just, I, I knew where it was going the whole time. You knew that he was a secret. Here's the thing. The thing with nobody is we learned in act one who Bob Odenkirk's character is, right? Yeah. yeah. We know that backstory. They save this for the grand reveal, oh. but everything that's happening, you're like, he mastermind this whole thing. Cause everything is going, it's just, I mean, look, if you just want to turn something on and have fun with it, th th there's some interesting things here. And Mark Rylance is infinitely watchable. That is really the biggest point of this movie. There's some fun to be had here. But uh, this was uh, Critical Clark decided to show up yesterday. <laughs> and just I picked apart every nook and cranny of this thing and really couldn't enjoy it. Um, but, you know, the... the I wouldn't look, it's unfair for me to say it's bad, but I'm trying to do a bit here. Um, there's nothing wrong with the outfit, but just for me, I saw every direction it was going. I do like the limited storytelling here. Uh, the acting is good on Mark Rylance's part. There, there were some other, there, there are some good acting here. I really wish they could have used a, a better heavy in terms of the mob boss here. That, that just felt like, um, a little bit of a fail here because I just no one can really chew scenery with Mark Rylance here. Ah. And he's just and he's playing a very laid back guy until at the end of the movie when he rolls his sleeves up and he has tatted all the way around oh. from kills that he has made. <laughs> That's kind of cool. Yeah. I like that reveal. But again, you saw it coming because the, the dude's an animal. Okay. And um it's a whole thing about a tape and who's a rat. And he and everyone was just, I mean, he was just playing them like an orchestra the whole way through. Um, I hate that. It, you know, it's one of those storytelling devices where like in Ocean Eleven, the way they lay out the plan, like if you're an audience member and you're hearing the plan before it goes off, it's going to go wrong. Yeah. But if you don't hear the plan, then it's going to work out and it's all the way that they reveal it. And I hate those kind of storytelling devices. They're so like on the nose every time. I um I mean I haven't watched like Kingsman or anything. Like do those movies like I don't know, have they evolved in the action genre at all or No, they devolved. Oh King really? Kingsman has only gotten worse. Oh, okay. Kingsman has only gotten worse. Um and I didn't see 3. Okay. Yeah. I don't need it cuz 2 was no good. They had a lot of money though, didn't Although they? 2 did make me tear up. Hey, how do y'all <laughs> feel about uh uh what is it? Everything all the time? And right now everything and all at once at the same time yeah. together my friend or what I don't yeah know. yeah it looks um, good I, but it is the same directors as swiss army swiss man army. yeah now the thing i daniel so i've uh been trying to cut back on my political podcasting and i've been listening to a bunch of different shit and i'm trying to stay film i want to be interesting on the show so i listen to letterbox their podcast uh oh my god I'll, I'll do that burden for everybody here. Don't don't go check that out. <laughs> but they do this thing where it's like, this week on Letterboxd, we have the highest rated horror movie. This week, it's been just thrown. And it's, dude, their highest rated was fresh. And I'm like, uh, my boy rated that movie, and he did not like it. <laughs> last, um, when we were at the ATA last week for the Unnamed Footage Festival Part 5. Yeah. Um, you know that bar next to the ATA? Yeah. There were people in the bar, and I was outside smoking a cigarette because I'm antisocial and I'm trying to kill myself. <laughs> uh, people outside the bar were talking. It was a couple of bros. Oh, yeah. And they were talking, bro, did you see that movie Fresh? It's got uh, <laughs> Sebastian Stan. Phenomenal. <laughs> Phenomenal film. 
I was halfway done with my cigarette. I threw it on the ground, went back inside. <laughs> Ruined my smokes. No, dude, and they were just ranting and raving about everything right now, yesterday, and tomorrow all at once. Yeah. And um, uh, honestly, though, everything they said about it does sound really Here's good. Here's the thing. I'm going to give him a shot. Yeah. Now, when he when one of the Daniels broke off and did his own, yeah. I, I really enjoyed the death of Dick Long. Yeah. I really enjoyed that. Um. I just the messaging in in Swiss Army Man. Uh, oh, I, I know. Found me very, it was disturbing to me, and it, it just it got way too cute. We may now. Do you know the runtime on this? It's two and a half hours. Yeah, I know. I I'm interested, and if you guys want to go, I'm down. I'm down to go. I I, I think if we go, we got to go Alamo though. It's got to be loud because right. that movie looks. They're doing the a multiverse thing, and it's not Marvel. So I'm kind of intrigued. All right. I'd be down. Also, you know who uh, has revived their acting career for this movie, right? Mm. Short Round. What? Fiddy Dollar Bill. He's bat. He's in the movie mm. and I heard he kills it too. <sighs> Short Round sucks. Data. <laughs> Short Round Have you ever sucks, seen a goddamn man. movie with him in it? Yeah. <laughs> Which one? The shitty one. You don't like Temple of Doom. Temple of Doom sucks. Temple dude. of Doom is the movie that made me. That's my other podcast. Yeah, Check it out. On fucking <laughs> suck. Dude. The movies that made me, bro. Writers is better. All right, listen to me. I love Data, dude. The He's film, great. The film that I want to talk about now is not only my favorite film that I watched this week. Uh, outside of Jackass Forever, uh, you know what? I don't know. This this is this is the film to beat for favorite film of the year right now. Coming in, coming in early, coming in hot. Again, just me perusing iTunes. Okay? But it beat Jackass already. I think so. Um, I really, I loved All My Friends Hate Me. This is a British film from director Andrew Gaynard. Uh, this is his first feature film. Uh, he basically comes, he comes from television, um, comedy, television, uh, Russell Fisher. He did, um, do you remember we made you watch that Tim Robbins thing on Netflix yeah, yeah. before the show called The Characters where he plays, uh. Um, I think he maybe did the Tim Robinson. Yep, he did the Tim Robinson one, um, the Mr. Vegas. Dude, that's Lady great. Lady Luck. Yeah. He directed that. So he directed that. that. Great. He directed a couple episodes of Detroiters, which was also Tim Robinson's show on Comedy Central. And this is his first feature film, All My Friends Hate Me. Pete is a cautiously excited... Mm. Oh, mm. Take two. <laughs> I'm cautiously excited for this party Pete, tonight. Pete is cautiously excited about reuniting with his college crew for a birthday weekend. But one by one, his friends slowly turn against him. Is he being punished? Is he paranoid? Or is he part of some sick joke? I have not seen a film that deals in social anxiety the way that this nails. Oh, okay. I mean, I... Here's the thing. I think that I have done a lot of work on myself in the past few years. You have. To where I, I mean, I'm not, I'm the same person, but I'm a different person, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. I think that I've calmed down a lot. Um, I was paranoid all the time about things. I cared about what people thought about me, what they said <laughs> about me. That burden has been gone and it feels great. And I'm not caught in these, you know, social anxieties um, that I was once before. So w watching the character of Pete going through this was like me trying to navigate my twenties and early thirties. Um, and it's just, I felt all of those pressure points and just the, um, impeccable bad timing of everything Yeah, where he's just, you know, he's making a joke about someone and that someone's directly behind him oh yeah you know that sort of thing but the way this one plays out was beautiful there was also a reveal involved in it um i will say the best use and the most painful and saddest use of the techno classic hit sandstorm is used in this film <laughs> oh my god it's beautiful he because he's trying to he is telling his girlfriend. So they go to this nice country home in the North of England um, that is owned by one of the college friends. That guy is great. He kind of steals the movie for me. Um, he, because he looks like a wealthy British guy, you know, you know, even though, you know, with what, with Western culture here, you can still sort of sense that, um, you know, 
old money, right? Yeah. And people with old money look differently, probably because of decades of inbreeding. <laughs> they have That's sunken fair. they have sunken eyes and uh square jaws, but dead eyes, and this guy was fantastic. Um that actor's name is where is he? <laughs> say, oh, Graham Dixon uh, plays Archie. He's great. But essentially, he owns this enormous, you know, estate um, out in the in the country of England, and uh, they go to the home, and Pete is the first one to arrive, and he tells his fiance or soon to be fiance that he was the life of the party. That people used to call him Skippy because he was the skipper. Mm -hmm. And so he pulls up to the thing. Now he sees cars there. So he starts to crank up sandstorm and then he's blaring it out of his car. And then he runs into the house thinking everybody's going to be there. And it's an empty house. Okay. <laughs> and it's just, then he just, then he just slowly walks back to the car because <laughs> his bit didn't work. And then he sits on the couch for five hours because no one's there. And then he thinks everyone's, you know, no one's here. Yeah. They left a note. He didn't see the note. And then they get to the house and they're like, and then they play a prank on them. They're like, man, you weren't supposed to get that invitation. You're not supposed to be here. Oh. And then they, they fuck with him and they just keep fucking with him. And there's another person there who he does not know who it is. And they're like, yeah, we met him at the bar. Well, there's don't, more. Don't, there, don't, I'm not, I'm okay. not, I'm not. But that, that it builds from there. And the culmination is just, I mean, it gets, it gets incredibly cringy. Um, it's hilarious. I loved every second of this thing because, you know, dealing with these social anxieties, I think that, you know, it, it can hit a home with a lot of people out there, um, you know, dealing with these situations, especially, you know, like a college reunion and seeing people that, you know, uh, you haven't seen in a few years and in college is also weird. Now, yeah, you know, yeah. I, I, I am still, you know, friends with a lot of people from college and we, we keep it, you know, in touch. Uh, primarily sports related, but you know, there's still a little bit there, but you know, I'm a different person than I was back then. And I think that if, um, you know, they can be a little sticky navigating uh, those situations. And I think this movie just does a beautiful job. Um, it is listed as a horror comedy. There's not a whole lot of horror here. Okay. Now there isn't an, uh, an ax chasing scene. Okay. Um, <laughs> But, you know, I, I think uh, a lot of it has to do with just internal paranoia with social situations. And um, I truly, this is I, five stars. I love it. I absolutely love it. Yeah. I, I highly, highly recommend it. I like the uh, tagline on the poster there. It says a hilariously squirmy squir skewering of 30 something neurosis. <laughs> yeah, it's exactly it. Yeah. Um, it's man. I, I may watch this again. I thought about watching it again. Hey, uh, runtime, a good 90 minutes, too. 90 minutes. It's good. Because, dude, you're 30 minutes into it. You're like, I'm tired, but I want more. Because a lot of stuff's going down, man. <laughs> and uh, it's 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 great. C cannot cannot uh, be higher on this. Good. I'm glad we ended on the good, then. Um, I feel like we covered it. Do I have to talk at all? Uh, you're going to give it to us. No, I know. <laughs> Do you know what that means, Randy? Yeah, I do. Yeah, X <laughs> gonna give it to you, baby. Ty West. Uh, it's pronounced Made T. A, T West. <laughs> T.I. West, dude. Yeah, dude, T.I. He's back again. And this time, it's 1979, and a group of young filmmakers are it's, set I'm out sorry, to make... I'm sorry, it's what? 1979. I'm sorry, it's what? 1979. What is that? Smashing pumpkins, you fuck. Oh, they were a little bit too uh, feminine for me in high school. Oh, God. Come on, man. I don't Come fucking on. rock that. I did <laughs> not have best, a zero The shit. best YouTube video of all time is Billy Corgan rides a, uh, rides a roller coaster. Oh, my God. That's so dumb. It just goes, <laughs> It's hilarious. A uh, group of young filmmakers set out to make an adult film in rural Texas, but when they're, when they're reclusive, I'm not reading this. Uh, there's some old people there, and they're not in Texas. It's New Zealand, which apparently ruined the movie for Clark. <laughs> God. I, no, I, yeah. it's fine. You know what? Let me talk about it a little bit, because I did like this film. Um, I love Ty West. and one, Do you? I do. And uh, That's cute. 
What, you don't? He's a hack. I think he got a lot of praise, and that instantly puts a lot of cool people in a, uh, you know, confrontational position. I with think them. he's a hot-headed moron. Yeah, I, I agree. I think he is a, a Golden Glove uh, winning boxer. Uve who... Bowl would whip his ass. Yeah, I know. Dude. Yeah, it's, I mean, there's a lot of lore around Ty West, and you might be thinking, uh, maybe it's not warranted. I do. I love the sacrament. I'm apparently one of the few people that loves the innkeepers, too. You are. I do. I love that movie. Um, House of the Devil. I saw that at the Lumiere. Shout out, great shout out Tom Noonan. Yeah, Tom Noonan's great in it. And, um, I don't know. I really like Ty West. And I remember hearing him on a podcast back in like, fuck, 2014 or something. You put Tom Noonan in X. I like X. He would have been great. Yeah. The old man sucked here. Tom Noonan was great in Eight Legged Freaks. It's hard to ruin Tom Noonan. Tom Noonan's great. Tom Noonan was great in the Pat Morita Jay Leno film I saw. Oh, my. Yeah. I remember you saying that. And it, it makes me want to watch it. Also, Tom you Noonan. You should watch it. I'm not going. To. It's good. Un- unless you watch it with me. All right. I'm in. Um, we got to make a menu too and do a barbecue thing. We'll skip the Formula One thing because it, <laughs> it hurts my soul. No, and you know, Ty West, he was, it was an odd complaint from a filmmaker when I heard him. I can't remember what podcast. It might have been the fucking movie Crypt, the fucking uh, Joe Lynch and Adam Green one. And he was talking about how he felt gypped by critics because a lot of them would just sum up his movies as a uh, slow burn. Hey, it's a slow burn. It was good. And it's like, I remember at the time being like, yeah, but what else would you call it? And then now here we are five years later, we're just making a ton of money doing this podcast, reviewing film. People care about what we say. <laughs> and I, I was watching this movie and I'm like, God, slow burn really is a terrible way to like run through a movie. And he's got a deliberate pace. It kind of pulls the genre guidance out of like horror movies in his films. Like the innkeepers, I think it doesn't resonate with people because you don't know what you're doing a lot of the time. It's kind of like, I don't know, millennials hanging out at a job they don't like that's about to close and they're confronted with what their life might become. So they're trying to have fun and they're looking for a ghost, which to me reads completely true. I feel that way. All the, I've worked with four companies to the end where they closed. And uh, in this one, it felt a little Tarantino, which I mean, uh, there's a lot more like visual guidance here. And we open up and... It's a good looking film. I liked his cast. I liked uh, the first half of the. We are doing a little bit of. um. What's the movie everybody complains about? Feels like two separate films that Tarantino did with uh, the Austin dude that we all hate. Grindhouse. No, not Grindhouse. The other one. Four Rooms. Not the other one. <laughs> this feels Planet like Terror. A, no, no. Planet Terror was part of Grindhouse. The one. Oh my God. People are yelling at their fucking thing right now. The one where Tarantino's in it and it, it's him and Clooney. And they're like robbing a store. Oh, from Dust Till Dawn. From Dust Till Dawn. It does feel a little bit like that. Like the first half it's of this not film. not a Tarantino movie, dude. Uh, I, it feels yeah. like it. So He's Ro- all over that shit. Robert Rodriguez. There we go. I couldn't think of his name, though. Also, shout out to Robert Rodriguez. Huge fan of the show. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, you know, I, I love the filmmaking of X. And it's... Uh, it's a little tough when you're coming into a movie that everybody's already like, oh, it's a slasher. Like he's doing a slasher. And there's so many tropes built in. And we know what we're doing from before we even start the film. And yet he knows that too. And he's playing with audience expectations the whole movie. Um, I, you know, I really liked it. And I found out that it was part of a trilogy that's already been shot. And I was kind of like, Oh, that kind of like changed it for you. You didn't know that going in? I didn't. I did, unfortunately. Also, uh, I'm, we're not going to ruin this movie. So if you go check it out and you haven't uh, heard, stick around for the post credit scene, which is really buried at the very end of the movie. But um, there's a little bit of what I'm talking about. And I don't, it kind of changed it for me. As a one and done, I thought it was great. Also, a lot of good storytelling in here. Like I was saying, the Chekhov, like Chekhov's blank, he did good job with it. A yeah. lot of the shit I didn't see coming to, but I think I agree with Clark, where our um, our our antagonist here is, is. There's kind of this theme of young, pretty people making a porno versus two people living in a rural house who are old and. Uh, it's just the horror of this movie is getting old, which I think is something everybody who isn't old or consider themselves old already, we kind of just don't think about it until you're there. And I think that's horrifying enough. 
but man, they really camped up these old people. They were in old mm-hmm. makeup, and the, and I I realized that the actors might not have actually been old, but they felt kind of yeah. cartoonishly old. Yeah, which I don't know. I it feels a little bit safe, like when you're doing Evil Dead blood, and it's like, well, it's not real death. We're having fun with it. This felt like, well, they're not really old. We're having fun with it. And I'm like, I think if you would have just went old, it would have been more impactful. But uh, yeah. Right? Like, I know, Randy, we saw it together over at the Alamo, which mm-hmm. I, I think Clark might not have liked it because he went to a mall theater. You really need that loud. Uh, you need to hear I, Fear the Reaper blasted through the Alamo sound system. Yeah, or an acoustic version of Fleetwood Mac. Hey, I didn't hate it. I did. And honestly, I took my love, <laughs> took it down. Dude, I, this movie felt very Tarantino to me. And what I I I had to re-examine what that meant, but I think it's playing within the genre, being respectful to it, totally understanding it, and then even getting away playing modern music or like period piece music, which I normally fucking hate, dude. It, it I don't know, it worked for me. The cast here was great. Oh, fantastic! Honestly, uh, Martin Henderson maybe put in my best performance I've seen this year. Um, as wait, which one was that? The cowboy. Oh, the, like uh, the so good. Running. He, he was so good. I wanted more time with him. Hundred yeah. percent. When he died, I got very sad. Yeah. I'm like, you're you're carrying the movie for me right now, man. Yeah, but he, I, slasher. What are you gonna do? He was hilarious. Yeah, true. Yeah, he was hilarious. Um, Kid Cudi. Or is Kid Oksana, Cudi was great. Oksana likes to call him Kid Cudi. You I didn't know. Call him. <laughs> <laughs> I Kid didn't know that was him till the credits either. So also, uh, Kid Cudi is a short guy. Oh really? And they made him a tall guy, which is hey, it worked. Fucking cool. Yeah. He's like five eight. So good for Kit Cuddy. I'm glad you're coming into this with the. Uh, he's positives. five eight, and his fake penis is five four. Wait, he's five eight. <laughs> yeah, and he's a short guy. I'm fucking offended, dude. You're short. I I am I am five eight, and I feel short. Thank you. And not only at Uff, where all the directors were like six foot three. I don't know what's going on there. Yeah, what the fuck? So you know, Oksana doesn't know this. I'm gonna turn off her headphones. But I've been wearing boots since I met her. It gives me another like two inches. Don't Costanza this day. I'm not joking. I don't do that. I, no, I, <laughs> yeah, I never cared about that. I've been short my whole life, and I really don't give a shit. Little's in your name. There's exactly. not much you can do. What do you expect? I don't know. That's what I'm saying. Better jokes. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, my thing here. <sighs> Mia Goth. I hated the televangelist angle of this thing. And we kept going back to it, and I knew where we were going. I did. And when it happened, I'm like, of course. Now I don't know. It's just I, 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 I didn't like how it was portrayed. I didn't like how it looked, and the messaging of it was just it felt tired to me because you know I'm fine with doing a Texas Chainsaw thing. Yeah. Because this was very Texas Chainsawing. Fine. <laughs> Okay, I've got no problem with that. Um, and I had no problem with the kills. The kills were fine. But that the weight of that evangelist thing, I it just was uninteresting to me. And I didn't have a problem with the Mia Goth part of it. Okay. To where, you know, the, the no, older... No spoilers, yeah. The older female. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm okay. And frankly, that's a... If you want to do a trilogy, I don't want to do a trilogy, but yeah. if, you know, that's the thing. I can see how, you know, because the prequel's already shot, right? So fine. The guy was just not interesting at all to me. That was a that was a lost opportunity. They're just honestly, I was not I was bored. You know, I think uh you're you're a lot closer to the evangelist like culture than uh we probably are too well, yeah me, but i mean also you know it's a cultural thing too because you know you're dealing you know 70s in the texas like yeah in texas of course well to me it almost felt like that boring kind of like uh coastal elite thing where it's like oh hey look at these art kids going out and they're you know gonna be in texas fucking around having fun and it's like i don't it kind of feels like a straw man argument or like a weird justification for like uh, what's about to happen like oh yeah. they should have known better but I, I didn't get that in this film but with the evangelist i was kind of like even the way he shot the tv like at the low angle that was high up and off i i don't know it did take me out of it 
And I was like, what are we doing? But then when I found out it was going to be a trilogy, I'm like, oh, that fool's probably in a lot more of this movie. I I don't know. Other than that, because I totally agree with you. Yeah. I uh I I really liked it. Also, the um I don't want to I don't want to describe any of them. But I thought the kills were like incredible. And it's really hard to make a slasher movie with creative and well-executed kills that doesn't just turn into like hatchet where it's like literally all about the kills. Where this one it felt like a a pleasant addition. Cuz I mean, god, it was like 2 weeks ago on here I was complaining that good gore isn't enough anymore. And you really got to do more. And I think not only were these thoughtful kills, but they, they they were satisfying too. I didn't like two of the kills. I loved two of them, and I don't don't I don't want to go into them. This one involved. I uh, yeah, I love I them. Hate that one. Yeah, you're dumb. <laughs> Fuck, that was stupid. You're dumb. It was it was check off. Okay, Randy, we got to cut this out. We, we're we're we going. Beep. Okay, ble- yeah, please bleep them again. Come on. If you see it back one, you know it's coming how, how back. Many, how many bleeps are we going to have? And no, because the way you first see it's it. It's been out for two weeks, so fuck you. No, America. no, no. Randy, we got to do your, uh, you got to bust out the keyboard. A synth, a synth yeah. bleep. We'll see. Randy, if you bleep anything, I'll bleep your ass. No, right? <laughs> <laughs> Don't bleep that. Uh, um, yeah, so where I stand, I honestly, I fucking really liked it. Clark, yeah. he didn't like it. We know that. But Randy, Oksana, let's get your perspectives in here. I also <laughs> really dug it. I think, you know, That's part okay. of it was also uh, being back at the Alamo and having a uh, drink and being there with friends, even though we sat in different rows. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I liked it. I like all was- the actors in it. Um, I like the look of it. Everything. Yeah, it, it was played very loud, which was which was nice. And uh, made a lot of the kills very effective. Um, also, Randy yeah. chose to sit in a different row. We did not move away from him. I think I bought my ticket first, though. Yeah. You did, but you know where we always sit because we're fucking cool and we're in row two. <laughs> That's true. I go row three and I do an aisle seat, even if the entire row is empty. Yeah. I think row three is actually better for the glasses wearers because you're not angling your head. As, but anyway. <laughs> I, I really How rude of it. me as the only one with perfect eyes in the room. I liked it. I didn't get a Texas Chainsaw connection at all until I started seeing everyone else's reviews of it. And it's like, okay, that makes sense on like a surface level thing. But like... Oh, shots fired. I, I don't know. I enjoyed it a lot. How could you not get the Texas Chainsaw? Well, yeah. In the beginning when they're on the road and they're in the van, the, yeah. the camera shot and everything was I very... I mean, there's a couple of yeah. elements, sure. But like... But they were very whole, superficial. I do agree with that's that. That's what I meant, surface yeah. level. Like as a whole, like... I, I didn't think of Texas Chainsaw. Well, how do you think about women being exploited in porn for the greed and wealth of a cowboy who turns out to be jacked and walking around in a thong? Uh, Tiger Wise. <laughs> he was, but he in was, my mind, he was in a thong. <laughs> but he was cool. He was fucking rad. Yeah. I want, I want a spinoff movie. Ty West, I know you're listening. Uh, go ahead, can the other two films. I know you shot them. They're if, not going to be as good if as If he's this. in the prequel, I'm in. If the prequel is just about him. Double in. Yeah, and he's a murderer. What if they, he does a prequel and he's kind of like Ramrod? And he's just like oh. fucking it up out there. Dude, if they remade... Vice Squad, he yeah. could he could be Ramrod, dude. He could be yeah, Ram-Wad. he could he could do Ramrod. He'd be a good Ramrod. He'd be a good uh he he could take the throne from Hauser and also be... he's from New he's from New Zealand. Oh really? Yeah. Uh, I, he had a <sighs> great accent. I'm he had a he had I'm a out. great Texas. Accent. I don't like these non Americans coming in. No, and I really crushing it. I I thought he did a, he did a <laughs> tremendous job. He was great. No, you were really bummed at the end. Me and Randy, we we stuck around because me and Randy, we we buy Criterion movies and we love film, so we make sure to read every name in the credits because they that's their moment. And by the end of it, we're like, wait, on location in New Zealand. I actually peed during the credits, but I heard that it was shot in New Zealand before I watched the movie, and I heard that there was a prequel shot already, but I didn't realize there was a uh, post credits scene. <sighs> did y'all see the post credits? I did. Mm-hmm. I did what, not. What happened? Also, I we, I should we should have set the scene. We were at the Alamo. It was Friday. We were all very fucking tired because of the film fest already. We got up. We brought Terrell out there, and Terrell would not let us leave that theater. He was like, "Just post post credits. Wait." So we did. So what's the prequel called? W. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you next week. 